This is Striker Avenio. This is the big one. This is the top 10 advanced tips for Metal Gear Solid 5, the Phantom Pain. So you've probably been playing Metal Gear Solid 5 now for probably around 10 to 20, maybe even 30 hours. You know the basics. You know about binoculars. You know about interrogating guys. You can capture everything with the Fulton. You destroy radar, surveillance, and communications. You rescue prisoners and you use supply drops. You've got D Dog and Quiet as a buddy, and uh, you feel like you got a good grasp on the game, and you can probably just keep on playing the way you've been playing until the end. But you feel like something's missing. Like you never really used much of the bionic arm, like you never used cardboard boxes, you're not really quite sure how the stun effect works. Well, these are the advanced tips. They're not secrets, they're not Easter eggs or hidden cutscenes. These don't include the buddies, but I played this game for around 88 hours at this point. I wanted to relay some stuff to you guys. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna get into these are specifically advanced tips. Um, this is the stuff that you don't need to know, but it's gonna make your game a lot cooler. So here we go. Stun effect duration. All right, so let's talk about this. You notice when it says stun above some enemies, and then it says ZZZ above the others? You might be thinking, well, what's the difference? Well, if they're asleep with the ZZZ, that means they'll wake up, and then they'll go about their normal patrol. If they're stunned, that means they will wake up in an alert state, and they will radio for help and whatnot. Uh, what I'm doing right here is what they call hold up. Uh, you can do it with a character laying down already, or you can do it uh, when they're standing up like this. This is technically called hold up. Now you can interrogate them from here. Uh, if Snake is fully standing, then he can tell them to get down. When you tell them to get down, they will stay down and they will not get up on their own indefinitely. Now, unless another guard comes over and ask them if there's anything going wrong. Then they will come out of this state and then they will go on the alert. If uh, another way that you can cancel it is if you hit an alert status. So you'll see here, I'm gonna let this guy see me and it's gonna cause an alert. And that's gonna wake up everybody else that's in a get down uh, like status. So you see, he sees me, these guys, they're immediately gonna get woken up. So, yeah, if you get seen and alert goes out, it will wake up everybody else. Or if there's another reason for them to be woken up. So, use it sparingly, but use it. Alright, with the whole get down thing out of the way, now let's address what stun effects last the longest. I bet you're curious. This is the stun effect that lasts the longest, the five hit combo. You hit the right trigger repeatedly, and you get a five hit combo. He will stay down for 20 to 30 minutes. A simple throw like that, that's only about a minute and a half. The uh, the chokehold, put him to sleep this way, this is actually the second longest stun in the game. They will stay down for about 16 minutes or so. Um, it, it, these times can also be increased depending on where you are in the game. This is just kind of rough estimate. The third longest stun effect is actually the tranquilizer shot. You're looking at about seven and a half minutes for this. Uh, all stuns other than the three I've just shown you really don't last that very long. Uh, like I said, a throw down to the ground is about 1.1 minutes. Uh, it lasts a little bit longer if you throw them into a wall. Um, you can also take their gun away from them. All you do is you hit the right trigger uh, once in order to initiate the attack, and then you hit the left trigger, uh, which is your aim button, and you will actually take the weapon away out of their hands. Now this is also another stun if you have an empty magazine. <laughs> Just throw it in their face and you'll actually get the little bing, too. Um, another type of stun is actually using the stun arm. I often don't use this because it, it literally costs me about 3000 to bring this into the battlefield each time. Um, it's kind of okay, it takes up a long charge. It is an area of an effect, uh, so it will stun everybody kind of nearby. 
<laughs> it looks cool, but it, it's not as long as the others. Using the cardboard box. So if you know anything about Metal Gear Solid, you know about the cardboard box and kind of how yeah, it's kind of a comedic relief type thing. It's not very realistic. Here I got a poster of a saluting officer on the front. And so the guy returns the salute. Now I actually move a little bit to my side. Uh, yeah, that's not good. You need to maintain line of sight. Here I actually open up the box in order to shoot him and I still have the box. Now the boxes here are finite. You'll actually uh, drop with like five of them. Uh, they can get shot up, they can lose flaps, they can get damaged. Ultimately, once you leave the box, then you're going to need to equip a new one. Here you can change the poster when you have it in your inventory. I switched the lady. Uh, you can switch posters without losing the current box that you have. Uh, well, I actually ended up losing it because I decided to attack the guy. You, once you uh, decide to attack another soldier, you usually end up losing the box. Um, but this is actually kind of funny. Here you can see I have the uh, lady in the bikini. Now, the, when the guard sees this, any guards nearby will actually run up to the box, uh, drop their weapon, and then gawk at the woman indefinitely. Um, it's a great tactic uh, if you want to use the laydown uh, lady. Uh, then you can actually back out of the front or back of the box. Uh, you can launch yourself out of the box, and then you can leave it there. Uh, I got the dog here, so he actually takes time to go through the animation of shooing the dog. But he will run up, drop his weapon, and then just start to look at it. And now he's open for attack. Uh, if you use the laydown lady, you can obviously get around him. Uh, so it's kind of fun. Uh, it won't set your world on fire, but it's okay. Uh, you just got to make sure to maintain uh, line of sight when you're returning a salute, uh, so to speak of. Uh, at around 10 to 14 meters, the, the guard will stop. They'll uh, return the salute, and then they will turn around and go back on their patrol. So just make sure to let them do that completely, because if they see the sides of the box, uh, the illusion is broken, and they basically will be alerted. The other thing you can do is actually the, um, the deploy points. Uh, you can unlock deploy points by finding these little orange uh, areas. You've probably seen them a couple times already. Uh, there's actually an invoice that's hanging on the side. In order to unlock this point, you need to grab the invoice. There you go. Now you have the deploy point. It's activated. So you just got to put on a cardboard box. You sit inside. You hold down the designated button. And now you can travel to any other point uh, on this particular map that has another one, another delivery point that is activated. So you, you'll see here, I actually go all the way up to the power station and I select that. Uh, that's a huge distance away and all it takes is a rather brief loading screen. You don't need to get on the helicopter, you don't need to abort your mission. Uh, you'll, all you'll get is a sound effect of a truck coming over to pick you up and a truck uh, basically dropping you off. And then before you know it, you're at your location. Um, I didn't mean to leave, uh, I meant to leave that loading screen in there just to show you, look how quick it is. Uh, and that's it, you're literally across the map. Even call, it's quicker than even calling in a helicopter. Uh, you can't be in any kind of alert phase at the base though. Uh, it won't let you do it. But if it's all nice and quiet, you can obviously do it. Um, so yeah, boxes are okay. Uh, they're a fun little diversion. They really are an advanced tactic. You don't need them to win the game. Um, and they take damage, like I said. But you can do a lot inside the box. Like here I get spotted, but you can pop out. Happy birthday! And uh, you know, you can shoot and get back in the box and move around. Adaptive difficulty. So you may have noticed when you started the game that there is no difficulty setting. Well, that's because the game has what is called an adaptive difficulty. So when you're on your map screen, you'll see it here in a, in a minute. Uh, when you're on your map screen, you'll see a selection of uh, six icons. Now, you probably noticed that like when you get a lot of... See, there they are right there. Those are the six icons. So the, the Fulton icon is if enemies see you Fulton a lot. Um, the levels are zero for gray, uh, level one for white, level two for orange, and level three for red. 
So the redder those icons get, the more prepared the enemy is going to be. In-game it's called enemy preparedness. So if I'm getting a lot of headshots, enemies are going to show up with helmets. If I start getting a lot of body shots, they're going to start wearing uh, flak jackets. If I get them really mad at me, they're going to start wearing riot suits. The little camera is for surveillance. That means I, I end up sneaking in and I don't get seen. That means they'll start putting directional mines in my way. Uh, the weapon icon basically means that I leave uh, or I continue to capture a base or continue to attack enemies while the alert is still going. Uh, that's dangerous because that will end up adding uh, shotguns and uh, machine guns for them. Uh, that's where the riot suits can also come from too. If I continually like to engage the enemy, they will get tougher and tougher. The only way to offset this is to do the dispatch missions, as you've probably seen. This will actually lessen for three missions uh, whatever you decide to pick, either the supply of night vision goggles and whatnot. So the game adapts to what you do. If you go at night a whole bunch, they'll start wearing uh, more night vision goggles. If you attack with your sniper quiet a lot, the enemies will actually gain some other uh, additional snipers as support. So it's actually kind of interesting and kind of cool. So look out for that. Roger that. The only way to completely reset the adaptive difficulty is to go into the options menu and pick the chicken hat. And then play the game long enough in order to hit a auto save uh, in the corner of the screen or just complete a mission with it on and uh, you know then immediately take it off that's the only way to reset as you can see from my game I had a lot of red areas I got guys that are using gas masks because I used a lot of sleeping grenades at one point they've got helmets on so my sniper can't even snipe a lot of them uh, in one hit without alerting them I got guys like this in riot suits that uh, you know you can't snipe them because their helmets don't come off um, they're putting directional mines out in front of me in my in the routes that I actually take. It gets annoying. So that's the only way you can actually completely reset everything to zero. Uh, I believe the game's designed so that late in the game, like where I'm at, uh, it's meant to be mostly in the red. It's meant to be hard. Fault in yourself? Really? Yeah, that's right. You can actually fault in yourself. All you need to do is go over to a shipping container hit Y to jump up on top of it, hold down Y to uh, start the Fulton, and then continue to hold Y and Snake will hold on. Uh, be sure to hold down that Y button or else Snake will fall off of it and possibly even die. Uh, you don't need to worry about getting extracted, you just hold it down and you will automatically get extracted. No call for a helicopter. Sleep and stun grenades. So we went over stun effects before, but have you ever tried to use the sleep grenades or the stun grenades? Sleep grenades, as you would think, emit a cloud of gas that, if the enemies are nearby, puts them immediately to sleep. As you can see, as long as the cloud is there, it will actually affect Snake as well. But, when thrown, it only takes a few seconds for the gas to come out and to actually uh, knock out the enemies. Now, like we said before, we already covered the top three uh, stun durations. So, yeah, the, the sleep that you get from this is not going to be quite as long as uh, tranquilizer darts or anything else. Um, and the stun grenades, the stun grenades uh, actually emit a sound, so they will alert nearby enemies. And the radius, you need to be pretty close. Uh, we'll see here. I basically get seen, and I have enough time to chuck uh, one grenade at him, and he is within the radius. And I'm going to throw a second one at these guys. The flash will affect Snake at this range, uh, even if you're turned away. And as you can see, it's done the ones in the immediate vicinity, and the ones just on the outside, it kind of dazes them like this. Uh, this effect doesn't last forever. Uh, it, it, it's moderate. You'll see here. See, and now he's out. Uh, so that was like, what, maybe 20 seconds or so. It, it really not a very long time. So you got to get in there and uh, do what you can with a stun grenade, and they will make noise. Yeah, those things are fun. The, the little decoys. They keep them busy. The enemies, uh... We'll look after them for a while. 
And so we're like, well, what about smoke grenades? Well, smoke grenades create a thick billow of smoke, and enemies uh, will continue to cough and choke inside the cloud. Uh, it actually emits pretty fast. As you can see, I throw it just before I get noticed. You can hear the hissing sound of the gas being released, and they're out. Um, it comes out pretty fast, and as you can see, it makes a pretty big cloud. These enemies are completely immobile. Uh, they can't move, they can't do anything. Uh, as long as that gas is there, you can run in and uh, do a little bit of crowd control. And you have plenty of time to do it. Uh, the smoke stays up for about a minute. Um, obviously, I think you can increase the duration and the size of the cloud. But this is basically just level one. So it gives you enough time, and you can see the cloud dispersal. As you can see, these guys are on the edge of that other cloud, and these are they're affected. Uh, I threw another one behind them. But uh, it's a pretty good range. Uh, if you're ever in trouble and you need a few moments uh, to yourself, just whip out some smoke grenades and uh, throw them out there. Uh, they work great, and they give you some cover, and they keep the enemy busy. You need resources. So an advanced tip is you know you're going to need resources, especially the fuel ones. Okay, this is Mission 18 War Economy. Set your marker for the door right there. We're going to go to that fence. Uh, this is basically, we started a mission proper. So we're going to go in, we're going to grab these materials, we're going to run back this way out of the area, make the game autosave, and it's going to save those resources. Then what we're going to do is we are going to abort the mission and go back to the ACC, or we are going to restart the mission. You do not want to uh, complete the mission proper, or else those resources then will be gone, and you'll have to wait. Uh, resor uh, shipping containers don't respawn until five story missions are completed. Now you can redo like mission 4, CW2 over and over again if you want to do that. Um, but yeah, it takes a while for the shipping containers to come back. So, a little trick with the save system, as you can see, it was it auto-saved back there by the road. I mean, technically it's doing it now, but that's because something else happened in the game. Uh, yeah, the dog found a couple of mines. Uh, dog's pretty good at finding those. It really helps out. Um, so, what the game does is there's a perimeter of autosave, uh, an invisible line that is stretched throughout the map. And whenever you cross this, the game will autosave. Now, it basically does this um, pretty much every outpost is separated by it. It's basically designed so that when you come up to an outpost or an airfield or something like this, it autosaves before you get there. So that when you come in and you get caught and you get thrown away, or you get killed, um, it'll autosave right outside. Now, this is only the one shipping container. Please forgive me. There, there should be more resources here. I just didn't resave it, but I, I made a very fast save of me doing this. I just wanted to show you. You, you snatch up all those shipping containers, and then you run back uh, to where the initial helicopter is. This will give you an autosave. You can't run in the other direction of the base and grab those other shipping containers. Now you gotta watch this car. Um, but you wanna keep running until you see that autosave. That basically means the materials have been added to your inventory. And then, you specifically need to abort the mission and go to the ACC, or restart the mission. You cannot complete the mission as desired, and you cannot uh, drop a helicopter. See, there you go. Development, uh, well, I mean, it, there, I, I got the biological uh, stuff. So now it is officially saved. Now is where you hit start, and then you reset. So that'll give you fuel and biological in that mission. This is mission 18, uh, Blood Runs Deep. Uh, right when you start, this is literally where I get dropped off. There are a couple of shipping containers here that have uh, minor metals. This will give you a lot. It's like 7,500 for one container, and 750 for the other. So this is the big trick. Um, as long as you are in a mission when you grab shipping containers, and as long as you restart the mission, or as long as you abort the mission, 
the shipping containers will remain there and you can grab them as many times as you want see there they are right there it's those two shipping containers that we want you can use this on any mission that you want grab all the shipping containers that you want uh, these are just two of the easiest ones uh, that you might see other videos on there actually is another one for mission 12 but that you need the wormhole Fulton I might do a video later on that uh, we're not gonna watch this entire video but this is basically how you get the resources uh, you need to grab these containers here and then you're going to run back to where the drop-off uh, helicopter uh, put you down and uh, then you will see the auto save uh, we're not gonna see it here because I'm, I'm trying to keep this video pretty short I might do a separate one on this but just know this trick um, any mission if you see a bunch of containers grab them all and just restart the mission but make sure that you go out of the area and trigger that perimeter uh, auto save uh, like I said it should be just outside of every base but depending on the mission and where the boundaries are you might not always uh, have it because like I said on the airport uh, you can't go south on the previous mission and run across the auto save you have to uh, you have to go in the direction I basically told you otherwise it, it won't trigger so do this and you'll have a lot of materials ready to go remove troublemakers so you need to go through your staff management at uh, mother base and you will find troublemakers in there yeah it actually is a skill uh, this is the violence one there's actually uh, one that's harassment and one that's unsanitary so when you have a troublemaker uh, he will actually cause injury to other ones uh, and he will cause fights uh, in the same unit uh, if you have two troublemakers they kind of cancel each other out but uh, unless they have extremely high skills uh, just get rid of any troublemakers in your outfit I know uh, it's a pain to go through everyone but they will uh, cause less fights you'll have less people in the brig uh, less people will be sick too as well um, so yeah just take them out they're really not worth uh, the headache of having them get rid of them take a shower for the love of God just take a shower so yeah there's actually some hidden stats when it comes to taking a shower um, the day the instant you take a shower um, your reflex is 0.5 faster your Fulton is an added 5% and your HP is 10% higher as well and as each day goes by up to five days uh, those skills actually decrease so your HP goes from 10% on the first day of your shower to 8% on your second, 6% on your third, 4% uh, on your fourth, and 2% on your fifth. So you need to be taking regular showers, and uh, it will keep your your health, uh, your HP up 10%, and your Fulton at its absolute fastest, and it'll also keep your reflex at about half a second faster uh, than it would on that fifth day. So yeah, take a shower and keep your stats up. Upgrade tools and weapons. Maybe this goes without saying, but yeah, you really should be upgrading your tools, uh, your secondary weapons, and your support weapons. Uh, don't forget that, like your opening uh, silenced pistol. Uh, you can increase the magazine size, uh, add a flashlight to it, uh, increase the suppressor durability later on. There's just a wealth of stuff, like the riot shield. Have you ever tried using the riot shield? Uh, you put it on your back. It kind of keeps you safe from gunfire a little bit. You can whip it out uh, when you need to. Um, and the decoys. The decoys are absolutely great. You don't need to really upgrade them to spending half a million credits, but they're nice to have. Uh, they really do keep the guys busy. Increase the hand grenades to increase its effect area and uh, the number. Stun grenades are great. Sleep grenades are, uh, they're stupendous to have. And yeah, you can even get Molotov cocktails later on. There's a lot of tools and a lot of cool stuff that you can play around with. Uh, so don't forget to upgrade them and to check this stuff out. Uh, C4 is obviously vital. Capture cages, you need those to get more animals. And that gives you money capturing animals. The sleeping gas mine is great. Regular mines, and then you got the electromagnetic mine. 
that will actually hold vehicles in place so that you can go up and fault in them. Uh, cardboard boxes have a few things, but don't forget your main tools either, like your binoculars. You can upgrade them uh, to not only analyze higher and higher ranks, uh, like at first you can't even analyze uh, A plus and A plus plus, but uh, and you can also eventually find out what their specialty is as well, their skill. Uh, upgrade your Fulton as much as possible, and yeah, there's even an upgrade for children uh, to Fulton them out. Your bionic arm has active sonar upgrades and mobility and precision and medical. It affects your aiming and whatnot, and your stun arm, the rocket arm. Uh, there's just a lot, a wealth of stuff. Don't forget to upgrade it and take it into the battlefield with you. Not to mention your sneaking suit and the battle dress. These added upgrades and tools really are the difference between uh, you just starting out playing and being an advanced player. Look, this is the EMP mine. It stops the vehicle in its track for a short duration. You can go up and Fulton it, and then there you go. You got yourself an extra vehicle. Uh, with the scope, here you are uh, marking targets. You can see A plus and plus plus soldiers. Uh, plus, it also tells you their skill, like diplomat. And uh, you'll see this last guy that I get. He's actually a gunsmith. Well, that's great. Um, so yeah, take advantage of these upgrades and pick some stuff out and try out some extra fun stuff. Weapon customization. So the one tip that deserves to be uh, the number one advanced tip uh, for the game is really customization in general. You know, you can change uh, the color of your vehicles, the helicopter, your buddy equipment, your emblem, but what really deserves to be number one is weapon customization. Uh, I wanted to add the zoo aspect stuff in here, but you know, there really is no need for it. You can look at the animals that you've foltened and that's about it. Well, some of them. And, I mean, I wanted to talk about how the cassette tapes take a uh, place of longer and more extended cutscenes because they give you audio of the characters talking with each other. But I think you guys don't need that. You need to know about the weapon customization, though. So you need to capture uh, the legendary gunsmith and uh, there'll be three side ops. When they come up, uh, go ahead and do them. And uh, what this lets you do is, uh, this is the UN ACR. So what happens is when you buy additional uh, versions of the same weapon, then you gain all those parts for it so that you can swap out. Like this particular gun itself, like I said, the UN ACR, it has a shortened barrel version that has a large magazine and a dot sight for close encounters. It has a long barrel version here. Uh, that I've added and then it has longer optics and whatnot, but once you've bought the separate versions of the same gun uh, Then you can interchange all of their parts now like the butt stocks You can actually swap those out on basically every gun that you've bought so the more guns you buy especially if they have uh, that yellow text which means that they have you know additional uh, optics and uh, parts that you can add on, it lets you be able to add those parts onto even other guns. But like I said, especially when they're all in the same uh, weapon category, or they belong on the same weapon. You can also, anything that you can't change parts out of, you can still color differently too. Uh, like here, here's the ALM-48. You can also see I bought the 48S. They're both separate weapons. They, you need to research them both. They both cost differently, but once you've bought both of them, uh, and they both have their own upgrade trees as well, you know, then I can start interchanging parts between the two of them. If you've just bought one gun, uh, you can't interchange anything, really. You get the factory stuff. And yeah, you can add a suppressor to a light machine gun. You cannot buy this in-game. You actually have to use the weapon customization, and you can make a light machine gun with a suppressor. You can add a suppressor to your tranquilizer uh, sniper rifle as well. I don't think you can buy one like that in-game. Or if not, you can actually just affix a suppressor that you've bought previously and go at it. So yeah, you won't be disappointed. Check out the weapon customization. This game is freaking awesome. Peace out.